it was just kind of mind blowing to like work on NASA's TIE fighter. Everyone has a Star Wars story. I'm Jordan Hembro, and I'm meeting Star Wars fans virtually who have been inspired and changed by the galaxy far, far away. Today I'm chatting with Kerry of Pasadena, California. Science and Star Wars have inspired Kerry from her early days to an amazing career with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This is Kerry's Star Wars story. Hey Kerry, how are you? Hey, how are you? Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so here we go. Tell me about your first encounter with Star Wars. What was that like? My family was doing a cross country road trip. And so they had this tiny little TV. It was just wide enough that the VHS tape could fit in the slot. And it was a TV recorded version. So all the lovely 80s commercials in the middle of it. And I remember always really being in love with the droids of Star Wars, R2-D2, C-3PO, just all the different droids. What was it about the droids that like you felt the connection about them? You know, everyone's so abusive to the droids. They're getting blown up. Up, they're getting shot at. I just felt sorry for them. I have a lot of empathy for the droids. With all we've been through, sometimes I'm amazed we're in as good condition as we are. So you've already told me growing up, you loved Star Wars. What else were you interested in? Growing up, I was definitely the general nerd. So sci-fi, fantasy, science, anything like that. I was into it. Most kids would spend their Saturday watching cartoons. I spent it at university laboratories doing chemistry experiments. It was kind of like going to a class on Saturday morning, but I remember going to chemistry labs and doing things and just a whole bunch of different sciencey stuff on Saturday mornings. So you're growing up loving Star Wars, loving droids, living this incredible childhood, and now you have one of the coolest jobs. Tell me a little bit about what you do and what your day-to-day -day is like. I am a systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Propulsion Laboratory, and that's just a really simple way of saying that I'm a Mars rover driver. How cool is that? Yep, I spend half my time driving the Curiosity Mars rover, and then the other half of my time, I'm actually working on the new Mars rover that just launched, it's on its way to Mars, and then I will actually be helping out the Mars helicopter, which we've called Ingenuity. Okay, so this is what's really cool to me. I heard you updated the progress of the rover on Twitter. Yeah, there was a couple of us who got together and we would update what the rover was doing. We decided to take pictures of this rock and we had to live on Mars time. So you're getting off at 5 a.m having a barbecue with all your friends while everyone else is going to work and they're really confused about it. It's really interesting living on like this whole different time zone from everyone else on the planet. I'm sitting around talking about Star Wars. You're living Star Wars. I mean, this technology is pretty far advanced, isn't it? Yeah, and it's really fun to see a lot of the things that are in Star Wars end up in science as well. One of the missions I used to work on was called Dawn, and it had ion engines. Well, TIE Fighter stands for Twin Ion Engine. We didn't have a laser, we weren't trying to conquer planets or anything like that, but it was still really fun to like work on NASA's TIE Fighter. So as I'm sitting here watching you, I see all these great costumes behind you. What is it about Rey that you love so much? I see a lot of myself in her helping others and trying to protect her friends. And that's just something that really drew me to the character. I'm actually a part of the Rebel Legion, going around to children's hospitals or schools. I really try to focus on events that are like astronomy club nights or Girl Scout STEM camps, where I can actually kind of blend my NASA background with the Star Wars background. I know your passion for technology goes beyond just your work. You've actually got a really cool hobby on the side too, which involves droids directly, huh? Yes. A couple years ago, I met someone who was in the R2-D2 Builders Club. He got me hooked in, and then I attended Celebration Anaheim back in 2015. And the instant I walked in that droid builder's room, I started crying, and I was like, I have to build one right now. Going through the R2-D2 building actually helped me at JPL as well. Getting to work with mechanical engineers, I can better understand what they're talking about because I've now built something with my own hands. It was just kind of mind-blowing that Star Wars is helping me understand my real-life concept. I hear you talking a lot about STEM organizations and STEM events. You told me a little bit about FIRST. Tell me a little bit more about that too. FIRST is a robotics competition for students where they actually get experience building real robots, going in competitions. I've helped out a couple times being a judge for local competitions. 
It's really important to reach out and go to schools, do video conferences, whatever it is, and reach as many children as I can to be like, hey, you can be this really cool nerdy woman and do these really cool engineering things. I've got to ask you, what impact do you think Star Wars has on real life science? Science fiction and Star Wars have really influenced a lot of engineers and scientists. And with stories, you can go anywhere. And that really allows you to explore things that maybe you wouldn't think of, but then can turn around and inspire things in real life. What if we did try to approach the speed of light? You know, all these different kinds of science concepts that now we can start thinking of because we saw them happen in Star Wars. Fantastic. Thanks so much for doing this, Carrie. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you for having me.